Good morning. Happy New Year to you all. Yeah, it's great to see you all here on a very cold morning, although quite a bit less cold than it has been the past two weeks. And uh, so that's a huge blessing in and of itself. I heard this week, this should be a cause for rejoicing, I heard this week that it's supposed to get up to 46 degrees on Thursday. Can I get an amen? There we go. All right. That's, yeah, that's, that's something we should be praising the Lord for. I'm uh, Pastor Dale Kaufman, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Richland Center Free Methodist Church. Our mission here is to love God, love people, and make disciples. And we are excited to have you with us here this morning, especially as we begin a new year of 2018. Now, you may notice that your bulletin looks a little bit different today. Did you notice that? If you haven't, you should take a look at it, all right? Uh, we hope that when you come in uh, to this church that you will be anticipating coming into the presence of the Lord, as you see in that first section there, that you will engage in worshiping Him with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that when you leave this place, you do so ready to advance the kingdom of God wherever this next week of life will take you, all right? So that's going to be our, our kind of our worship theme, that we anticipate coming into the presence of the Lord, that we engage uh, in worshiping Him in different varieties and forms, and that we leave this place ready to go forth and ready to advance uh, the kingdom of God. Now, if you would, please make sure that you take a few minutes to fill out the connection card that's in your bulletin, especially if uh, you have some prayer requests. Uh, we'd love to know about those, and then you can drop it in the offering plate later on in the service. A couple of things I wanted to highlight uh, before we, uh, we get going today. First off, you may have noticed when you walked in that uh, there's been some construction going on. So uh, kind of pardon our dust, if you will, a little bit. We've uh, got some new walls that, are, that uh, got put up uh, outside the main office and uh, some doors that are getting replaced and that type of thing. Hopefully that will all be uh, finished and done by this coming week. Uh, ushers, greeters, anyone involved in our hospitality ministries at all, if you would meet with me right after the services, right up here in front, I've got some very uh, great things to share with you as we begin a, a new year uh, to help in, in your ministry. So uh, please just take a couple of minutes. It won't take very long afterwards uh, uh, to meet with me right up here in front. Appreciate that. Chaos, Kids Honoring Our Savior. That's going to resume on Wednesday uh, from 6 o'clock till 7.15. And uh, my wife Pam and uh, who else? Joanne and Darla and Ida and others are involved with that. And they're doing a great job with that. So if you know a kid that needs to be here, anywhere from age 4 to 6th grade, so it's a big span, if you know a child that, uh, that needs to be here, please invite them to come to, uh, to our Chaos program. And also you see in your bulletin a listing of our Sunday school classes. So I figured since we're starting a new year, this would be a great time to uh, maybe try something new. If you have not come to a Sunday school class before, well, there they are listed in your bulletin. They all start at 9.30 in the morning. I know that's an hour earlier than you come for church, but I think you can make it. We have some great uh, teaching going on uh, in, uh, in those classes and some great fellowship. So uh, this would be a great time to, to try something new. And then you also see in your bulletin the uh, insert about the life care and the life tree groups that will be uh, beginning this first part of 2018. You can read about them in the insert. I ask simply as we begin this new year that you please prayerfully consider uh, being a part of one or maybe even both of these ministries. Uh, you'll be hearing a little bit more about them as we go on later on in the year. I think that's all the announcements that we have this morning. So uh, before we begin with our call to worship, which will be a video, why don't you take a moment, stand and greet somebody maybe you haven't seen yet. And uh, when the video begins, then that'll be your cue to come back together again for worship.
And let's shout for joy. Let's sing to the Lord. He is our rock. He is an amazing God. So let's worship his name this morning.
Father, we love you. You live, and we celebrate you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, different bulletin, I don't know whether I can get up to date or not. Um, you know, it's hard for old people to adjust. Okay. I read a devotional this week um, that made the statement that we take on attitudes, habits, and behaviors of those we spend the most time with. I wonder if we are showing to others who we spend the most time with. Do others see good traits or bad or questionable ones? Maybe we haven't been spending as much time with Jesus as we should in prayer and Bible study. We have a new year before us. And perhaps it would be good to reflect what our attitudes, habits, and our behaviors are telling about who we spend our time with. Let's go to prayer. We come to you, Lord, today wanting to spend more time with you. Forgive us when we let other things creep in. And maybe even other relationships that may not be what you want us to be in. And then all those things that we want to shine from our life and reflect from our life because we've been with you are missing. Forgive us, Lord. for not spending, not desiring even sometimes to spend as much time with you as you'd like. For you want to be in a relationship with us, and relationships never work if we neglect the other person. We thank you, Lord, for what you did on Calvary for us. But you didn't stay there. You rose again. And that's why you're alive and we can be alive as well. And as we are in your house of worship today, Lord, may your presence be ever real. And may the time we spend with you today reflect those traits of you. And remind us, Lord, that sometimes it is hard to find time in Bible study and prayer like we'd like to. But you can be with us all day long. We just need to invite you. And when that happens, we can say a word of prayer throughout the day, talking to you just in a regular conversation. And then you begin to reflect from our lives, who you are, that others can desire that same kind of relationship. We pray, Lord, today for your family around the world. We're one church, but there's many churches, Lord, and there's places where there aren't even churches, but people who know you have found you, and we pray you'll be with each one today. Be with those that are at home or those in assisted living or nursing homes that wish they could be in your house today. May they find your presence all around them and that they can spend time with you today too, Lord. Go with us throughout this week that we would reflect you always 
what you want us to reflect. And we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, Janice. Well, kids, it's our time together. So come on in. By the way, is anybody else fighting colds? Anything like that? I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've been fighting one for a week or so. What do you think, Mr. Colin? How you doing, buddy? Hey, come on up, guys. Oh, good to see you. All right. Ooh, hi, sweetheart. Come on, have a seat there, guys. All right. How you guys doing? Good? All right. What'd you guys get for Christmas? What'd you get? A lot of stuff? A lot of stuff. Like a... A lot of stuff. Okay, all right, all right. Colin, what did you get for Christmas? Do you remember? Two purple Sasquatches. Two purple Sasquatches? Really? That's what it is. Okay, all right, all right. I wasn't sure he was pronouncing that correct. I want to see the purple Sasquatches, Chris. You're going to have to bring him in. All right, that's just all there is to it. All right, well, this is something that, that uh, I got for Christmas, and me and my wife Pam, and we got this for Christmas from our son. Now, he had just gone over to Africa. All right, so he spent a lot of time in Africa, and he was over there on a trip, and he brought this back for us. Now, it doesn't look like much, does it? You know, not much to it. But if you open it up, inside, can you see what's inside? Yeah. Can you see what's inside there? Yeah. I don't know if you all can see what's inside there or not, but it's a nativity scene. All right? And this is all made out of, the whole thing is made out of banana leaves. Banana leaves that they dried over, over in Kenya, and they dried these banana leaves. And I don't know what they, how they weave them together or whatever, but uh, I'll, I'll leave this up here and you all can take a look uh, afterwards. But this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it reminds me, I was, I, was really great, I was really happy when my son gave this to us, because it reminds me that we are not alone. That there are people all over the world that believe in Jesus. There are people all over the world that are in church on Sunday mornings. There are people all over the world that we are a part of their great family. And uh, as we start a new year of 2018, I think it's good to remember that, uh, that you're not alone in, uh, in your faith, that Jesus loves everybody, and there's people all over the world that worship and love him too as well, and they are our brothers and sisters in Christ just as much as anyone here. All right, so let's have a word of prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much for these kids. I pray, Father, as they start a new year that you would just bless them tremendously. Thank you, Lord, for your church that's all over the world and uh, for the, the family of believers that we are a part of. Uh, remind us of that uh, uh, every, every time, Lord, we pray. And we just ask that you bless us in this new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. And ladies, you can go back now. Oops. Um, I don't know why, but the truth of grace was so, um, it seemed like God really needed to teach me that last year. And I was thinking, in, as we go into the new year, to learn more and more about God's grace um, is my desire. And the amazing part is, um, about a week ago, we had a granddaughter born, and unbeknownst to me, they named her Grace. So I think, God really wants me to learn about grace. Um, <laughs> So we're going to sing um, 201, um, verses 1 and 4, and then all the verses of Amazing Grace.
seated. We come down to the time of our service where we receive our, our morning offering. And uh, I, I am, have been so blown away by the blessings of God uh, that he has poured out in, in my life. And I'm sure you are just as blown away by the blessings he has poured out in yours. Uh, my wife and I are coming up on uh, six months that we will be here at, uh, at Richland Center Free Methodist Church. Uh, in just a couple of weeks, it'll be our six-month uh, anniversary, I guess. And so uh, we are just excited and thrilled to, to be here and excited to, to continue to minister on in for hopefully years to come as, as the Lord gives us grace and, uh, and gives us the strength to, to keep on keeping on. So uh, we're excited about that. So as we enter into this new year of 2018, I hope that you will give with a generous heart, give with a cheerful smile on your face, for it does say in the scripture that God loves a cheerful giver. So let's have a word of prayer for our offering now. Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, so much for your blessings that you have given us this past year and in the years past. And, and Lord, as we look forward to the new year of 2018, we don't know what this year holds, God, but we know that you hold this year. And so, Father, right now we commit uh, this whole entire year to you. We commit our lives to you afresh and anew. Father, we ask that you would uh, go with us, that you would go before us in this coming year. As we come to this time of our offering now, God, we thank you for the ministries of this church. Uh, thank you for the, the generosity and the devotion of your people. We pray, Father, that you would bless this offering and build it, use it to build your kingdom in this place in greater ways in the year to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is Hebrews 5, 11 through 6, 3. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. You may be seated. Pardon me, I've got to get everything together here. Well, 
Well, I hope you have had a wonderful holiday, wonderful Christmas and New Year's, and that you're ready to get back into, into the swing of things. Maybe you already have as, uh, as we enter into uh, New Year of 2018. I'm, exci- I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but I'm excited at, at all that God uh, is going <clears> to <throat> excuse me, accomplish this, this year. I hope first he accomplishes by getting rid of my cold. I would appreciate that if, if God would do that, but you know, it's gonna, probably going to run its course. So uh, that's the way it goes. Well, uh, <clears throat> When I was growing up, my mom only believed in certain things. I had a, I had a pretty strict mom, and she was, she was a great mom, don't get me wrong, but uh, thank you very much, man, appreciate that. But uh, there were certain things that she, she believed and, and certain ways she did things, and, and that's like most moms, that's probably the, the way it is. Um, and she only believed in feeding her kids certain things, too, as well, all right? For example, uh, as kids, we were never allowed to drink coffee, all right, which is why I can't stand this stuff to this day. It was always an adult drink when I was growing up, and many of you have asked, well, Pastor, why don't you drink coffee? Uh, I never developed a taste for it, and, and because we were never allowed to have it, all right? And so now I just drink hot chocolate. Can't stand the stuff. My wife loves coffee, and I make it for her faithfully every single day of the week, I'm a good husband, just want to let you know that, and uh, I think I've only missed maybe a handful of days in, uh, in all the... I just forget to turn the coffee maker on. That is, that is an issue. I get the coffee in there, but then I forget to press the button. I don't know what it is, but anyway. Anyway, back to my mom, and uh, she only believed in feeding us certain things, and, and uh, we never ate Chinese or Mexican food when I was growing up, never did, probably just because my mom was a Kansas girl, and she didn't know how to cook it. You know, but I, I don't recall really ever having tacos or burritos or uh, anything like that when I was growing up. Chinese was way out of her comfort zone. She would have never done that. The only time I really remember her making foreign food was when we had an Indian foreign exchange student come, a, a guy from India, all right, who came over and, and he was used to lots of curry in his food. And so all of a sudden we went from this bland, you know, kind of normal farmhouse type food, I won't say it's bland, it was really good, but normal farmhouse kind of food to everything had to be flavored with curry. You know, that was, that was quite the shock. Um, but one of the things that I, I really remember that we were not allowed to have when I was growing up was certain kinds of breakfast cereals, all right? So at our house, when I was growing up, there were, there were three or four main staples of breakfast cereals. Now, remember, I had, I had an older sister and two older brothers, all right, and my dad and my mom, so there were six of us in, in our immediate family, but uh, there were certain things we were only allowed to have. For instance, Wheaties. This was it, the breakfast of champions, right? We'd only have, we'd only have Wheaties, and, and the, other, the other variety that, that we could have were Cheerios, Wheaties and Cheerios. Some of you are nodding your heads. Maybe that's all you, you have in your, in your house, too. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and, and one of the other things, wheat checks. You know, wheat checks were, and I still like wheat checks to this day, you know, but, but uh, these were the three staples, Wheaties, Cheerios, and, and wheat checks. Now, occasionally, uh, we, we might get a little treat, and we would get some Rice Krispies, right? I don't know if you could really count Rice Krispies as a really, you know, real treat or not, but anyway, they make Rice Krispies treats, and those are good, but she rarely did that. We just had the cereal. You know, by the way, did you notice that, you know, the whole thing about snap, crackle, and pop? You know, how <laughs> Rice Krispies don't snap, crackle, and pop after about 30 <laughs> seconds in milk. You know, they just get soggy, all right? And the same thing with Wheaties and, and even Cheerios and Wheat Checks, it all, it all kind of got soggy. So those were, those were the staples. None of those, uh, none of those sugar-sweetened cereals in our house. You know, now we might go so far as, as Rice Krispies, and, and, and every once in a while, if we were really, really good, she might let us have a little bit of Frosted Flakes, all right? But again, that was, that was it. There was no, uh, no uh, Fruit Loops, nothing like that. Uh, you know, I would see commercials on TV about Lucky Charms and, and how they were magically delicious, you know? And, uh, and, or Toucan Sam would, would, would tempt me with Fruit Loops, you know, and I was like, oh, wow, I wanted some of those. And, and then, then there was, there was the Trix Rabbit. Remember the Trix Rabbit? What was his slogan? Tricks are for kids. Not this kid. Not this kid. There was no way that my mom would deign to have this kind of sugary, sweetened cereal in, in our, in our cupboards. 
I never tasted Lucky Charms or, or Fruit Loops or Tricks until I was a grown man. Do you believe it? That's really true. That's, really, that's why I'm so messed up today. No, that's not right. <laughs> when, when Pam and I got married, we, uh, we uh, went out and we kind of did our first shopping trip together. I don't know if you remember this, Hunt, or not. We went out and did our first shopping trip together, and we went to the store, and, uh, and, and I insisted that we buy a bunch of sugary cereals. I mean, we came home with the, with the Lucky Charms and with the Fruit Loops, and I, I, I think we did, I don't remember if we did tricks or not, uh, but we came home with all these sugary cereals because I was bound and determined I was going to prove to my mom that I could have a bowl of Lucky Charms and not die. Yeah, I, I kind of have some mommy issues. But, but let's, let's talk about, uh, where are they? Let's, let's talk about tricks and, and Fruit Loops for a minute here. Now, there are marketing campaigns Tout them as fruit flavored. But did you know that the rings and fruit loops are all the same flavor? Do you know that? They are. You know, all the, all the different colors, what do we got? Red, orange, gray, green, yellow, whatever. They're all the same flavor. They have always been the same flavor. It's only because the colors are different that, that we think they are different. And, and uh, Trix, when it was first made back in the 1950s, there was 46% sugar in Trix cereal which is no wonder why my mom wouldn't let me have it growing up, okay? I, I get that now, as now that I'm a 50-something-year-old guy, I understand that, you know? Uh, you can eat a bowl, and you can trick yourself into thinking that you've got your daily fruit intake when really all you have done is just taken one more giant step towards diabetes, all right? But I'm not really here to, to diss on sugary cereals or anything, because, you know, I, I really like them, and most of us do. Uh, but they make a great introduction, to what we're going to be looking at in the sermon series that we'll be beginning today. It's called Growing Up Without Growing Old, which is maturing in our faith by living out the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, now you get it. The fruit, the fruit, now, now you're with me, okay? All right? That's what we're going to talk about. Now, as you just heard from the Scripture reading, we are supposed to grow up. We're supposed to become mature in Christ. We are supposed to leave behind childish ways. We're supposed to move on from, from what it said there in Hebrews, move on from the milk, if you will, onto the meat of the faith. And we typically think of someone who is mature in the faith as a person who spends a lot of time reading and studying their Bible, right, or praying a lot. We have this lofty ideal of some super saint in a monk's robe, all right, I think I got a monk there somewhere, there he is, all right, he actually kind of looks like me, he's got the bald head and the big nose, I, I think I could pass for a good monk, you put a little robe on me, I'd, I'd be all right, okay, um, but this is kind of our, our ideal of, of this, this super saint, you have to be in this robe, you have, to, you have to practice prayer and fasting, you have to deny yourselves worldly pleasures, all so that you can get closer to God, and now, of course, we do need to pray. We do need to fast. We do need to deny ourselves. We do need to read the Word of God. Of course we do. Okay? But before any of those disciplines can truly be used to help us mature, there first must be the fruits of the Spirit manifest in our lives. Because you can say that you pray all day or you read 10 chapters of Leviticus every night before bed, but in the words of the Apostle Paul, if you don't have the first fruit of the Spirit, which is love, then you are nothing more than a noisy, clanging symbol. Or, in the words of Shakespeare, your life will be a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. That's kind of the secular way of putting it, but Paul says the same thing. If you don't have love, you're just a noisy, clanging gong or symbol. For a Christian to grow spiritually, the Foundation blocks of the Spirit have to be in place, all right? So, somebody grab a Bible for me. This is a little interactive sermon this morning. Somebody grab a Bible and, and read for me Galatians 5, 22, and 23. It's not going to be up on the screen, all right? So I need somebody, whoever gets it first, this is what we used to do in Bible school, whoever gets it first gets, gets to read it, all right? So who's, who's got it? Galatians 5, 22, and 23. All right. Deb, you already read the scripture today. I want somebody else. All right. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So we have we have love. All right. And and we have joy. And we have peace. And we have forbearance, or in some translations, patience. 
And I actually like the word patience better because we all need patience, right? All right? So patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. And self-control. Those are the foundation blocks. Now, as you, as you look at that, at that list, is there anything on that list that you don't want more of in your life? I, I don't think so. If anybody says there, there is something there that you don't want more of, well, you probably have some problems there. Of course, we all want to be... Uh, loving people and joyful people and on and on and on. Is there anything in that list that others around you would not be drawn toward if you exhibited more of them? In other words, if you had more love in your life, if you had more joy, if you had more peace, if you had more patience, wouldn't all of those things be drawing cards to others? Wouldn't they say, yeah, I want to be around a person of love. I want to be around a person who is patient. I want to be around a person who is kind. I want to be around a person who practices self-control. We naturally want to be around people of love, people who are kind, good, gentle, faithful, all those things, people who keep themselves under, under control and don't lash out at others around them. These are all qualities that any sane person would want to have, right? So if us Christians were really exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit, it should be telling to the world around us, right? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be. Back in 2012, the Barnard Group did a study, and they asked a group of people, what words or phrases best describe Christianity? What words or phrases best describe Christianity? The top response among Americans aged uh, 18 to 29 was anti-homosexual. That was the top word used to describe Christians and Christianity. For a staggering 91% of non-Christians, this was the first word that came to their mind when asked about the Christian faith. The same was true for 80% of young churchgoers. Did you get that? The same word came to mind for 80% of young people who were churchgoers. That the first word they would think of when they thought of Christians was anti-homosexual. The next most common negative images were judgmental, hypocritical, and too involved in politics. Other words that have been used to describe Christianity and Christians in recent years are wildly outdated, prissy, interfering, megalomaniacal, infantile, prurient, perverted, and my personal favorite, silly. Really? Those were words used to describe Christians. Now, you can say that's the world's viewpoint, and we're always in some way going to be enemies of the world and its views, and, and that's true. All right? and, and I would agree to a point. I, I, I'm not sure that, that uh, you know, people out in the world, they don't get an accurate picture of, of Christians. We, we know that. We understand that. But in an age when the church has been branded as unloving, unkind, faithless, mean, out of control, with a message that is irrelevant and extreme, potentially even dangerous, we have to do better, don't we? We have to do better. And, and I believe that doing better at this starts by growing up without growing old. There's a quote by uh, G.K. Chesterton. This has become my mantra for how I look at God and, and how I want to approach life. It's a quote that, that you're going to often hear me refer to. I, I don't know that I've quoted it yet here, but if I have, you'll, you have to forgive me because this is just the greatest quote. I love it. He says this, Because children have abounding vitality, because they are in spirit fierce and free, therefore they want things repeated and unchanged. They always say, do it again, and the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly dead. For grown-up people are not strong enough to exult in monotony, but perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotony. It is possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun, and every evening, do it again to the moon. It may not be automatic necessity that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never got tired of making them. It may be that he has the eternal appetite of infancy, 
For we have sinned and grown old, and our father is younger than we. That last sentence says it all. We have sinned and grown old. We have. But our father, God, he's younger than we are. Not, Not in years. That's not what we're talking about. You understand what we mean here. See, the Bible says that we are in all things to grow up into him who is the head of the body, which is Christ, correct? But it also says that we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven until we become as little children. Now, there's your paradox, right? You have to grow up, but you can't enter until you become a little kid. So so how how do we resolve that? I think the key to resolving that paradox is this. As we consciously pursue the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, we grow up. We become more like Jesus, while at the same time, never growing old, because we will have the eternal appetite to be more loving, more kind, more gentle, and all the rest. You see, it feeds on itself. The more loving you are, the more loving you want to be. The more kind you are, the more kind you want to be. And all all the rest. See, growing up without growing old has nothing to do with your physical body, including if you eat sugary cereals or not. It has nothing to do with it. It doesn't have anything to do with your intellect or your job or your family or even your circumstances. It has everything to do with how you internalize and then exhibit to others the fruits of the Spirit. It does. I mean, I've known some 90-plus-year-olds that are young in spirit, like Eileen. <laughs> and, and, and I've known some, some 20, 30-year-olds that have just lost it. They're just so old, they just don't do any of this stuff, and, and, and they may even claim to be Christians. Boy, they sure don't act like it. They don't act loving or kind or gentle or faithful or any of this stuff. It has nothing to do with your, with your physical body. So over the next several weeks, we're, we're going to focus in on the fruits of the Spirit. And I'm going to challenge you to be better, to be more grown-up Christians by becoming as little children full of love, full of joy, full of peace, full of patience, full of kindness, full of goodness, full of faithfulness, full of gentleness, and full of self-control. And I know that as we practice these things with each other and with our families, with our friends, with our coworkers, that we will become a people known not for our hypocrisy and judgmentalism, but a people known as real followers of Jesus, who love and care and seek to be his hands and feet and bring his message of hope to a world that desperately and deeply needs to hear it. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's the challenge for 2018 and beyond. I challenge you today to not grow up. I mean, I'm sorry, to not get old. That's what I want to say. All right? I challenge you to grow up, but don't get old. All right? (laughs) I almost got that wrong there. All right? (laughs) All right? I challenge you to to make a commitment to have more of the fruits of the Spirit in your life. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about these fruits of the Spirit. We're going to expand on them and and, and open them up a little bit, unpack them a little bit for everybody. And and it's not going to be a nine-week series. Don't worry. Oh, he's going to talk about loving and joyful. and We're going to, we're going to kind of uh, uh, meld some of them together. Um, so, uh, but, but I, I challenge you to do this. I challenge you today, as we start a new year in 2018, to take a look at yourself and say... What of that list, can you go back to the list for me, Chris? What of that list do I need more of in my life? What of that list do others need to see more of in me? Hey, now that requires a little self-reflection, right? That requires a little, okay, pastor, well, you're starting the year off right, making me think, yeah, I'm going to, because we all need to be doing this. And the more that we do this, the more we become loving and joyful and peaceful and all the rest. The more that people will be drawn to us. You want to know how to grow a church? 
You want to know how to fill the pews every Sunday morning? It's if each one of us does these things. That's the only way it's going to happen. I'm a great preacher, i got to tell you. I'm humble too. No. I'm not that good. But it's not about the preaching. It's not about even the songs that we sing, as, as good as they are. It's not about picking the right hymn. It's not about it's not about how much you put in the offering plate, although please keep putting money in the offering plate. It's not about any of that stuff. That's not what's going to fill the pews. What's going to fill the pews is that list. And not just me doing that list, not just Pam doing that list, but every one of us here doing that list. The more that we do that, I believe we're going to see these pews filled. I believe we're going to see those pews back there filled. I believe this church is going to bust at the seams because people will be attracted to the fruits of the Spirit that they see. They will be attracted to the young people that are here. Not young in age, necessarily, but young in spirit. People who are loving and kind and gentle and all the rest. Because, see, that's what Jesus was. Think about that. That's the way Jesus was. And isn't that the case? If we act like Jesus, if we become more like Jesus, that's what's going to do it. And, and it's, not just, it's not just about filling the pews. It's about our own intimacy. It's about our own walk with Jesus. So I hope over these next few weeks uh, that, that, uh, that you get closer to Jesus, that you become more intimate with him as we exhibit these fruits of the Spirit. I don't think there's any better way to begin this journey than by taking communion together. And uh, I'm so glad that this is the the first Sunday of the month we get to do that. See, communion reminds us that it is not about us. Communion reminds us it's not about us. Communion focuses our hearts and spirits on the one who gave us everything so that we could lack nothing. Communion at its core is a remembrance of sacrifice and it's a celebration of beautiful, abundant, and joyful life. Now, in case you don't know, I'm going to remind you that we believe in open communion here. That means you don't have to be a member of Richland Center Free Methodist Church to take communion with us. We just ask that you know Jesus. You know, because that's the, that's the, the New Testament uh, requirement, if you will, is that, is that you just know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And, and if you don't yet, then I want to take a moment in prayer now, and, and I want to introduce you to your Savior. If you don't know Jesus, then this is a great time. You know, as you look at that list and say, wow, I need to be more loving and gentle and kind. Well, All that starts with first, with a relationship with Jesus. So I'm going to pray right now, and then uh, uh, after I've been praying, Joanne is going to come up, and she's going to assist me with uh, communion. And as we come to the table of the Lord, we've got a little uh, little ritual that we're going to be uh, uh, reading through. So uh, I hope it's it's meaningful for you as well. But let's, let's take a moment and pray right now. Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, so much that we have the opportunity to be here, to engage in worship with you, to, to come into your presence, to know more of your love, to know more of your peace, to know more of your kindness in our lives. And Father, we pray that all of those things, these fruits of the Spirit, would overflow through us to bless those around us. We thank you, God, that, that we have this opportunity, that, that we can stay young in you, that we can have that, that eternal appetite of being more loving and of being more kind and all the others. So, Father, I pray as we begin this new year and as we take communion together as one body of Christ that you would remind us, you would remind us, God, of all you have done for us and of all you are doing. Father, may we be ever mindful of your blessings on us as we leap into this new year. And we pray, Father, that whatever comes this new year, that we would face it with you and that we would face it as little children, just totally dependent on you and full of love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May those things be hallmarks of our lives and of our church. We pray this year especially in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Joanne, would you come up and assist me here? After you receive communion, please feel free to use this altar as a place to uh, do some business with the Lord. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way so that everybody has opportunity there. Oh, thank you.
Look at that. Moved all those blocks and not one of them fell. I'm not very humble today. She's calling me out. <laughs> you who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who desire to live in love and peace with your neighbors, and who intend to lead a new life, following God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this sacrament of communion to your comfort, and in humility make your honest confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness, and your love. We sincerely repent and we are deeply sorry for all wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us and cleanse us. Give us strength to serve you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue our confession as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our, our Father, Father, which art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Almighty God created us to enjoy fellowship with him. And even when we transgressed his command, he did not forsake us but chastened us as a merciful father. He called Abraham out of the land of his fathers and freed the children of Israel from bondage and slavery. He gave his law and sent the prophets to guide his people in holiness. At the right time, he gave the world his only son, who by his birth of a virgin and through his temptations and ministry, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, opened to us the way to heaven. He sent his Holy Spirit, the counselor, who through the apostles and the church called us to salvation. He adopted us and daily gives us aid in the journey of faith by that same Spirit. So in confidence that he will bring us to our full inheritance and give us our place at the heavenly table with our Savior Jesus Christ, we offer thanksgiving, joining our voices with all the church to confess, and please repeat after me, Christ has died. Christ, is risen. Christ has risen. Christ, is risen. Christ, will come again. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all, did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world. We come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded in memory of his passion and death, may partake of his most blessed body and blood. Amen. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, and when he had given it thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. We had given thanks. He gave it to them and he said, Drink of this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you come to the table of the Lord now?
going to close our time uh, this morning by uh, singing a song called At the Cross, where the blood of Jesus, his love, ran red for us. I hope that this week you will uh, keep in mind the challenge that I gave to you to live out all of those fruits of the Spirit. And that God will bless you in tremendous ways this week as you walk in Him. As you stand together, let's worship the Lord. Thank you.